13 WMAZ morning starts now. Here comes the sun in Dublin this morning. Check out that picture. Pretty nice sunrise there, but cold. We're going to remain cool today. I've got your details on your forecast coming up. Plus, the latest on an arrest after a lockdown at Westside High School that forced virtual learning days for students this week. Plus, a woman is looking for answers after law enforcement stormed into her home. Hear what she says happened. And on C13 this week, we introduced you to a Central Georgia man putting his baking pan where his mouth is. How he's competing on a national TV after the Food Network reached out to him. Oh, well, good morning. Happy Thursday. What a beautiful start to the day we're seeing in Dublin right now. The time is 630 on this November the 17th. I'm Caitlin Heck and I'm Juan Ye Reese. It's another great morning all across Central Georgia, especially with that sunrise, but it's another cold morning, Caitlin. Yes, even colder than yesterday, Alex. Yeah, some 10 to 12 degrees colder across Central Georgia as temperatures are firmly in the 30s up towards the north. 36 in Macon, 36 in Byron, 39 in Forsyth. We zoom out and look at Monticello. They're at freezing right now, 32. Yeah, down towards the south, you're running into a little more cloud cover. So you're looking at temperatures close to 40 down there, if not over 40, like 40 43 in Vidalia, but all in all 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 degrees colder than this time yesterday. Milledgeville, the winter right now, 13 degrees colder than 631 on your Wednesday morning. A live radar picture, nothing going on out there, not expecting anything through the day today, calling it cooler. More sun than yesterday, going to be one of those days where it is a cool day, but if you're in the sun, it's not feeling that bad out there. You're in the shade, you are actually going to be on the cold side of things. And as we talked about earlier tonight, Warner Robins lighting their Christmas tree. Expect temperatures in the 40s with clear skies across central Georgia as the clouds begin to move out. Should be an exciting night down there. Also, Mercer Village lighting uh, their lights there across the street as well. So the cool day is continuing. We've got the coldest nights still to come and a rain chance mid next week. I've got the details on that coming up in just a few moments. Thank you, Alex. This morning and tomorrow, Westside High School staff and students will hold virtual learning days. The decision comes after a man with a gun caused the school to go on lockdown. The lockdown at Westside High School happened when deputies say the man jumped out of a car with a rifle and ran as a school officer approached him. School leaders cited the quote social emotional impact of the situation as the reason for the virtual learning days. Bibb County Sheriff David Davis says the search for the man started around 3 p.m. just after he ran off. The school stopped dismissal and got the students inside until it was safe for them to come back out. The man ran to a nearby home and asked the homeowner to hide there. Davis said the homeowner refused and shot at the gunman's feet. He dropped the rifle and ran off. He got caught when he circled back to the home on Columbus Road. Came up to a house here at, uh, in the 6500 block of Columbus Road. Uh, the homeowner encountered him. Uh, the homeowner was able to detain him and the deputies were right close, uh, close by and they came right on in and, and took the individual into custody. Thankfully, in this situation, Sheriff David Davis says no one got hurt after the scare at the school. Law enforcement agencies came from all around to help find the man. And he says the person who helped catch the suspect is an honorary deputy. The Bibb Sheriff's Office says they will release more information on him later. Well, the woman whose Glendale Avenue home got searched by local law enforcement and the FBI says she doesn't understand what led to the surprise raid. Ulisa Flores Marcial says she was at home with her newborn baby and two year old niece. She said she heard tear gas canisters slam inside of her home. When she rushed to the kitchen to grab her niece, several officers burst in. She says one officer pushed her against the wall and now she's wondering why. Pues eso no es lo que, por qué me hicieron eso. Yo no soy una delincuente. delincuente. She's not a criminal. Why did they come into her house like that, especially after giving birth? Now, the Bibb County Sheriff's Office says no one got arrested at the Glendale Avenue home, although four people were arrested in raids at other homes during the operation. Flores Marcial says authorities found nothing there. The Sheriff's Office would not confirm that. She says she and her husband met with a lawyer yesterday about the search. 634, let's get you to your state news. This is a sad story to share with you. Former Georgia Speaker of the House David Ralston died yesterday. It comes two weeks after Ralston stepped aside as speaker citing an unspecified illness. Ralston was an attorney from Blue Ridge who served in the General Assembly for 25 years, six years in the state Senate and in the state house for the past 19 years. He was elected House Speaker back in 2010. Ralston is the second longest serving speaker after Democrat Tom Murphy, who served for 29 years, but he is the longest serving Republican speaker. Ralston was 68 years old. We are certainly sending our prayers and condolences to his family. Right now, attorneys for Georgia jail detainee are calling for the deputies to be fired and arrested. Assisting the video shows the violence was unjustified. The September confrontation was recorded by security cameras at the Camden County Jail. In the video, you can see the jail detainee being punched by guards in the head and neck. 
Oh, if Mr. Hobbs was an animal, this would be cruel to the animals. Fired, convicted, well, arrested and convicted. I want them behind bars. I want the roles to be reversed. So we asked Hobbs attorneys if there is any additional video showing what led up to the incident. They said it will be released soon and shows Hobbs did nothing to provoke the beating. Well, this morning in animal shelters are full, which leaves a litter of rescued puppies in need of a home. We brought them in and upon looking at them when they came in, we found out that they had scabies. Now the Thomasville Humane Society is counting on the community to provide them with a brighter future. The Humane Society took to social media after receiving the litter of five asking for donations to help house and nurture them back to help. Now, someone that we spoke to says that it is not a transferable disease to humans from animals and that once they're treated, they can be released. Now, that person we spoke to also added with shelters seeing more animals coming in than going out, people are encouraged to hold on to their pets or try rehoming them and to only turn to the shelter as a last resort. All right now, more than a week after the midterm elections, Republicans are projected to win a majority in the U.S. House, but now the party faces a potential identity crisis. We have our work cut out for us. We've got to have a small majority. We've got to listen to everybody in our conference. To believe that Kevin McCarthy is going to be speaker, you have to believe he's going to get votes in the next six weeks that he couldn't get in the last six years. With GOP infighting, Kevin McCarthy is trying to shore up GOP support in his bid for speaker. On the Senate side, Senator Mitch McConnell will continue as minority leader after a challenge from Florida's Rick Scott. Former President Donald Trump also stirred up party divisions by announcing a third run for the White House. Meanwhile, a final vote in the Senate is expected today to ensure marriage equality as federal law. Lawmakers are rushing to pass some key bills before the end of the year ahead of the new session of Congress. This legislation just says that the status which is conveyed by one state has to be recognized by another. Uh, at the same time, uh, this legislation provides important religious liberty protections. Well, yesterday, legislation to ensure marriage equality is federal law did move forward with 12 Republicans joining Democrats to advance it. Legislators proposed the bill after the Supreme Court overturned decades old precedent on abortion. The Georgia Secretary of State's office conducting a risk limiting audit to check the 2022 general election results. Counties start auditing the selected batches of ballots today with the goal of finishing by tomorrow. It's up to the Secretary of State to pick the race. This time he picked his own. Brad Raffensberger won re election with a little more than 53% of the vote over Democrat B. Wynn. The audit is required by Georgia law for every even year general election. Last time, the election under scrutiny for the audit was the presidential race because the results were so close. The purpose of a risk limiting audit is to sample random batches of ballots, count them by hand, and see if the results mostly align with the official machine count election results. 638 this morning, there's new markers along the Okmulgee River. The Parks and Beautification Department is teaming up with the Fire Department to make Amerson River Park a safer place for recreational activities. Parks and Beautification Director Michael Glisson says the markers will serve as reference points for emergency responders. A numbered marker will be placed on trees every 500 feet along the Amerson River Park side of the river. There will also be a map nearby so visitors can see what the markers are being used for. There are future plans to extend the signage to the Spring Street boat ramp. Coming up, our morning reporter TJ Anthony tells you about a Central Georgia baker on the Food Network. Plus, it's Baby Friday. Stick with us as we show you what you can do to celebrate your big weekend, Central Georgia. It's now 639 here on your Thursday morning. There's a lot that's going to be going on even just this evening. I know we got Christmas tree lightings, all kinds of celebrations. Yeah. It's just going to be cold out there for it. And a lot more coming in the weeks ahead. We got Thanksgiving next week, Black Friday, a week from tomorrow. Then that puts us into uh, December shortly thereafter. So buckle up because the year is coming to an end fairly quickly. Check out this shot now. This is a live look down at the Georgia National Fairgrounds. Temperatures across the area. We've got cold temperatures. 36 in Macon, Warner Robins, 37. Dublin and Perry across the area. We've got 30s and 40s. A few more clouds down to the south this morning. And because of that, the temperatures are a bit warmer, 40 in Unadilla, 40 in Cordial, 41 in McRae, and 43 in Vidalia. Up towards the north, not so much. 32 up in Jasper County right now. The cold spots there. We don't have anything on the radar this morning and not expecting anything through the day today. Cold and quiet across the southeast this morning. 20s back into Oklahoma, Arkansas, Mississippi, parts of northern Alabama, Tennessee. We will be in that situation tomorrow morning across central Georgia. I'm forecasting an overnight low of 29 before all is said and done. You'll see that on the seven day in just a moment. 
moment. But first, the clouds we have this morning down to the south, those are going to continue to work their way out of the area through the day today. Gone completely by about the 2 p.m. hour. Temperatures into the low 50s. I would not be surprised if we have one or two communities, especially further north and west, say for Scythe, Thomaston, up towards Pike County that do not make it into the 50s today. It's possible that the high temperatures in the 40s. Then later on tonight, I do think we get a few degrees colder across central Georgia than what this is showing. I'm thinking a few spots get into the 20s, including Macon, forecasting an overnight low of 29 there, then back into the 50s tomorrow afternoon. Some clouds build in overnight into Saturday. They'll move out of here fairly quickly, though. And then overnight Saturday into Sunday, a more substantial cloud deck will build in as this system rolls down to the south. Both the European and the GFS keeping rain entirely out of central Georgia. I don't have a rain chance there, but we are going to be looking at increased cloud cover. Then once we get into next week, our pattern becoming a little more unsettled. You see some rain down to the south and east there. That's going to be on Tuesday. I've got a small rain chance. And then once we get to about Wednesday or so, you're going to notice our next system beginning to take shape back out towards the Mississippi River, working its way towards our area probably right around Thanksgiving it's looking like. So 30s this morning giving way to 40s later on this afternoon, eventually to a high temperature right around 52, calling it cooler with more sun than yesterday. Then for tonight, as we talked about, the Christmas tree lighting down in Warner Robins. Look for temperatures in the 40s down there. Clear skies, the clouds will be moving out. It should be a nice night down there in Houston County. Also Mercer Village lighting uh, their string lights across the street tonight as well. So 56 for tomorrow, 57 on Saturday. The cool stretch continues. Our average high for the time year is 69 nowhere close to that over the next seven days and then there comes that unsettled pattern beginning on tuesday carrying it through it looks like the holiday on thursday thank you alex 641 before we go to break check this out on this day in 1989 the movie the little mermaid debuted in theaters fun fact the popular song part of the, your world was almost cut from the film i thought it wasn't all right we are back with uh, more news and weather after this